Hey, I'm back! And this time, I have a script and a costume tutorial. Kinda. So, this year for Halloween, I decided to dress up as one half of my favorite band, Daft Punk. I'm going as Thomas Bangalter, aka the one with the silver helmet. The budget for this helmet was about $30 total for a helmet with no lights. I would have loved to add lights, but I wanted to make this for as cheap as possible. Also, I have no clue how to add the lights anyway. Unfortunately, I promised some friends of mine that I'd wear my costume at a party that didn't have a set date yet. And then the date was set for October 18th, which at the time I found out meant that I had two days to make my helmet. So this video is about the experience of rushing to get it done. Let's get started. On Columbus Day, I went to the thrift store and bought a baseball helmet and a brandless black jacket for about $4 total. I knew full well that the baseball helmet didn't exactly match the dimensions of the official Daft Punk helmet, but it was about one half of the helmet already made, had a visor, and had plenty of padding so it's comfortable to wear and doesn't easily fall off. I also had some black gloves and a cloth face mask I bought at Party City forever ago. I don't remember how much it cost, and I couldn't find it on Google, so I don't know how much they'll set you back. It's not completely necessary though, but it does enhance the look of the costume. That's about as much preparation as I had. So I did some research to figure out what I needed, and after 30 minutes of looking for spray tint I could buy locally since I can't wait for shipping, I compiled a list of stores I needed to go to and things I need to buy. Excuse me sir, you have to make a Daft Punk helmet in two days. Huh. Excuse me sir, you can't go buy the stuff you need. Yeah, I don't have a license and I couldn't get a ride. Well, gotta do this tomorrow. Luckily I can still work on the helmet. The lower visor and mouthpiece is from a printable template I found online. I printed those out into cardstock and started to assemble them when a miracle happened. My grandpa came over like he does every week, bearing pizza and Panda Express, and was able to give me a ride to get the stuff I needed. Now we're in business. First stop, Joann's. I picked up a large sheet of gray foam for the gloves, which was a dollar. I only needed half of it in the end, but the large sheets were only 10 cents more than the standard size, so why not? I also got some clear vinyl for the visor, and I only needed about one sixth of a yard. That was actually a lot more vinyl than I needed, but it also meant I would have extra in case I screwed up. And I did. Surprisingly, that was only a dollar as well. Next, Walmart. Silver spray paint was four dollars, an X-Acto knife was about three dollars, and spray tint was- Wait, thirteen dollars? That's highway robbery! For something I'm going to use once and then probably never again, that's a lot. But I needed it, so I reluctantly bought it anyway. I later found out I should have gone for the ten dollar tinted overlay sheets. Alright, now that everything I needed was purchased, I went home to discover... YouTube's down. And I totally don't need it for instructions on how to make the visor or anything. I got to work on the visor. The cardstock is pretty flimsy, so I took some chopsticks and cut those to size, then glued them to the visor and helmet as supports. It actually made the visor pretty rigid and sturdy. For the ear pieces, I took two soda cans and cut them down to size so I could use the bottoms. Once I was satisfied, I permanently attached them with hot glue. By the way, you'll want a hot glue gun for this. The soda cans cost me pretty much nothing since I fished them out of our recycling, but if you don't have any, then you'll want to pick two up from Walmart. You can buy soda cans for 50 cents each from the vending machines out front. So at this point, the helmet is pretty much assembled, but it looks kind of crappy without the paint. However, it was getting late. I gotta do this tomorrow. The helmet's ready to be painted, and the visor's ready to be tinted. For this, you'll want to go outside. It was raining when I painted it, so I worked in the garage with the door open for light and ventilation. Painting the helmet wasn't too hard, despite me literally taping the visor on. While I had the spray paint out, I got the sheet of foam and sprayed the surface of it. We'll be using this sheet for the glove, so it's best to make sure it and the helmet are the same color. I got gray foam because it was the closest color to silver that they had. While all that was drying, I went to tint the vinyl. The spray tint I bought was an automotive tint designed for taillights, which in reality I shouldn't have bought. I cut off a piece of vinyl and very generously sprayed tint till I couldn't see the surface underneath it. After all, that's how the real helmet looks, right? Unfortunately, my result was sticky, messy, and impossible to see through. I tried again with another piece and sprayed less on it. I could see out of it, but not well. I can make out objects or figures, but I can't read anything or look at my phone with a helmet on. Unfortunately, this is what I had to settle with due to time constraints. It works well enough, and I probably won't be wearing the helmet often anyway. Final step for the helmet is attaching the visor. I wasn't sure how much I needed, but I cut my strip in half and glued the center of it to the top of the visor. 
I then worked my way to the ends, cutting the vinyl to size until it fit just right and didn't hang over the edge. Alright, home stretch. Last thing to do, and it's not that hard. Just time consuming. The gloves. I found a printable template online that matched up well enough with the gloves I had, and I placed that on top of the foam sheet. I used the X-Acto knife to cut a rough outline of the gloves into the foam. I removed the resulting foam hands from the rest of the sheet and continued cutting the foam into pieces. I kept the foam and the paper template together so I knew how big the pieces needed to be. When I finished cutting out a piece, I hot glued it to the gloves. The end result came out rather well, although I did mess up with the thumbs, as the placement doesn't match up with my actual thumbs. It's fine for me, but if you really care about that, then try to find a 3D hand model at a knickknack store or something. I do not recommend wearing the glove while gluing on the pieces. It's called hot glue for a reason. With the gloves done, the costume is complete. In total, the costume cost me about $26 to make, but I did have some items on hand, and I can't guarantee your local thrift store will have a baseball helmet, so it's not an accurate price when it comes to how much it'll cost you. Ballpark estimate is, let's say, $30. Anyway, if you want to build the costume for yourself, I'll leave a link to all the templates I found, as well as the products I purchased in the description. Thanks for watching. Bye.